Several videos back, I mentioned the ill-fated 1715 Spanish treasure fleet, but I want to explore this story in a little more depth. If you've ever seen the series Black Sails, you'll probably remember the Urca de Lima, the treasure ship Flint and his crew were chasing in the first season. The Urca de Lima was a real ship, and it did indeed wreck off the coast of Florida after sailing into a powerful hurricane. But the Urca wasn't alone, it was part of a fleet comprised of 12 ships sailing from Havana to Spain. Let me take a minute and give a little background here. Once every year, a large group of ships would depart Spain with European goods and sail across the Atlantic. When they arrived in the Caribbean, they would separate into two fleets, the Flota de Nueva España and the Flota de Tierra Firme. The Flota de Nueva España, or Fleet of New Spain, which is now Mexico, sailed to Veracruz to load silver and cochineal, a valuable red dye. They also loaded porcelain and silk from Asia, which arrived in Acapulco and was carried overland. The Flota de Tierra Firme was sent to South America and collected gold, silver, emeralds, and pearls. Once the fleets were loaded with treasure, they would sail for Havana and wait for the other to arrive before returning to Spain. In 1701, the War of the Spanish Succession broke out, and the flow of treasure from the Caribbean to Spain was all but stopped. British and Dutch privateers were prowling the sea routes looking for any Spanish ships, and English naval forces had sunk or captured several Spanish warships, seizing treasure. In 1715, towards the end of the war, the Spanish king Philip V ordered the treasure fleet to be sent to the Caribbean in order to bring back desperately needed gold and silver. This gold and silver had been accumulating over the course of the war. The 11 Spanish ships had grouped in Havana and would travel back with the French fourth-rate warship called Griffin. The Flota de Tierra Firme was comprised of six ships, and the Flota de Nueva España was made up of five ships, including the Santisma Trinidad a Dutch-built merchant ship nicknamed Urca de Lima. The captain of the French warship reported the value of the cargo to be at 15 million pieces of eight, which is worth over $750 million today. The fleet had been waiting to sail for almost two years and was commanded by General Don Juan Esteban de Obilla. Obilla was pressured to set sail even though the Atlantic hurricane season was already well underway. On the morning of July 24, 1715, the fleet set sail. July 24th was a calm day with a gentle breeze, and slowly the ships made their way into the Gulf Stream, sailing up the east coast of Florida. They would have had no idea that a massive hurricane had formed to their southeast. The first five days of the voyage, the weather remained calm, and the trip was largely uneventful. By July 29th, larger waves had started to form from the southeast, and the air would have been hazy. Experienced sailors would have been concerned, knowing these were early signs of tropical storms. The next morning on July 30th, the winds would have been noticeably stronger, and by mid-afternoon would have been over 30 knots with 20-foot seas. Obia ordered all ships to head into the wind so they stayed offshore and away from the treacherous shoals and reefs that surrounded the Florida coastline. This attempt was unsuccessful, and by midnight the ships were almost completely out of control. On July 31st at roughly 4 a.m., the doomed fleet started to run aground off the coast from present-day Vero Beach, Florida. The heavy wooden ships slammed into the shoals and broke apart like toys. The Urca de Lima was able to steer into a river where she came to rest on a sandbar, but did not break up. Most of her cargo was intact and the Spanish built a camp around the Urca's wreck before burning her down to hide the position. Out of almost 2,500 sailors, well over a thousand died, including Juan Esteban de Obilla. The French ship Griffin was the only one in the fleet that made it. Griffin had remained offshore and sailed ahead of the fleet, arriving off the coast of France on August 31st. They were not even aware that the other ships had sunk. Back in Florida around sunrise on July 31st, the survivors combed through the wreckage and bodies of their friends as they washed ashore. The fleet was separated by miles, so the survivors wouldn't have been able to realize how bad things were. They didn't have food, water, or medical supplies, and each day men were dying of starvation, injury, and disease. On August 6th, 19 men took one of the fleet's small boats towards Cuba to try and get help. It took them 11 days, but they finally reached Havana, and a few days later, ships were underway carrying supplies, salvage equipment, and soldiers. Spanish sloops dredged the seabed and brought up chests of silver coins, jewelry, and gold, and soon additional ships were sent from St. Augustine to aid the salvage effort as well. By early September, the governor of Cuba sent 25 soldiers to guard over 5 million pieces of eight, but the weather began to turn. News had spread of the wreck, and privateers and pirates set sail, hoping for an easy chance to get rich. In November 1715, a Bermudan privateer named Henry Jennings heard about the news. Jennings was operating from Jamaica, and had been granted a commission from the governor, Lord Archibald Hamilton. In December 1715, Henry Jennings and Charles Vane captured a Spanish mail ship. 
On board was a document that gave the position of the Spanish salvage camp on the Florida coast. Jennings and a force of around 300 sailed for Florida and found a treasure shipment in a lightly guarded fort. The men attacked the camp and the 60 Spanish soldiers had no choice but to retreat. Jennings and his crew had captured more than 87,000 pounds in gold and silver, which was equivalent to a 10-year salary for that time. This was an act of piracy and the men sailed to nearby Nassau, where the money was distributed amongst the men. Jennings then sailed back to Jamaica and his arrival created a sensation, motivating other privateers and pirates to sail for Florida, hoping to find anything that Jennings had missed. Jennings went to give Governor Hamilton his share of the treasure, but the governor reported he didn't accept anything, simply stating, I heard it was taken from the shore. Hamilton, fearing a conflict with the Spanish over the stolen treasure, advised Jennings to quietly leave Jamaica, and he attacked the wreck again. The Spanish offered Jennings 25,000 pieces of eight to go away, and Jennings accepted, but not before taking some of the Spanish cannons for his ship. Jennings went on to attack the wreck site a further two times before finally being declared a pirate and forced out of Jamaica. Once again, he sailed to Nassau where, along with Benjamin Hornigold, he ruled the island. In 1718, a new governor of the Bahamas, Woods Rogers, issued a decree offering a pardon to any pirate who surrendered. Jennings sailed to Bermuda where he accepted the pardon and went on to live out his life as a wealthy and respected member of society. He is one of the few pirates who successfully retired. Thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed today's video. If this is your first time here, please consider subscribing. A special thank you to my Patreon, 1660, Lucas Tanburn, Jordan D. Majerus, and Larry W. If you have any ideas for future videos, please comment below, and if you can support my channel on Patreon or with the PayPal donation, it's greatly appreciated.